It was Luke the physician, a Gentile who was nowhere near the events leading up to and surrounding Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, who God used to provide us with the greatest detail of what we now celebrate. Luke, through his association with the Apostle Paul, made careful investigation of the events, writing them out for Theophilus, that he and we also might know the exact truth about what we have been taught. Luke's starting point, however, is not Magi, nor Herod the Great, nor shepherds, nor a taxation decree, nor even Joseph and Mary. Luke begins with an elderly couple who were very similar to their great ancestors, Abraham and Sarah. Like Abraham and Sarah, this couple named Zacharias and Elizabeth had never held a child of their own. The years had slipped by and the hopes and dreams of earlier days had succumbed to the realization that some things just don't happen. And so with this as a backdrop, we are set in Luke chapter 1 and we find Zechariah in his priestly ministry, in his priestly duty, serving in the temple and there he sees a vision of an angel who speaks to him. And Zechariah is about to have his world essentially exploded. Those things which have been set apart, set aside, God is yet to do a mighty work in his life and in the life of Elizabeth and their home. The angel speaks to this frightened man, this frightened priest, and here is what the angel says. Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard. Likely that petition that Elizabeth would bear a child, likely that was years old, but God remembers the prayers of his people, and God had heard his servant, and God had held on to that, and God was about to answer that petition which he had prayed, perhaps that he had now utterly forgotten about. Your petition has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will give him the name John. John, the name so common among us, the name that means gift of God, for this is exactly what John would be as the forerunner. A gift to these two elderly people, but a gift to us all. A gift to the world, one who would prepare the way for Messiah to come. We continue to read, and in these words which the angel declared, we hear and we see the overall plan of God in sending John that he might come, that the character of John and the character of his life and ministry might reflect the character of God's plan. See what God was up to. See what he was working out. The angel says to Zacharias, you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. You see, God is the one who brings joy to the heart. God is the one who is now working here to bring about the removal of the curse that descended in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, and when they had wandered from the plan of God, God is now wanting to reinsert that joy that Adam and Eve felt when they walked hand in hand with God. They would know joy and gladness, surpassing the joy and gladness of simply holding a child in their own arms but they would know that God had not forgotten about his people. There in Egypt, in the time of Moses, when Moses comes to speak to the elders of the people, having now come to the age of 80, and God, through Moses, reminds the people that he has not forgotten about them. The people are comforted and they are strengthened. They are encouraged. Here in like manner, there is joy that comes to the heart in knowing that God has not forgotten his promises but that he is accomplishing them systematically and thoroughly joy and gladness many will rejoice at his birth all who come to salvation truly to rejoice verse 15 of Luke chapter 1 
for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Jesus himself would say, among those born of women, there is no one greater than, the, than John the Baptist, except those who are least in the kingdom of God are greater than he. Well, indeed, the angel said, he will be great in the sight of the Lord. This world might have thought of him just as a strange man there by the Jordan River, dressed in uh, camel skins and goat hair and eating locusts, strange attire, strange diet, but great in the sight of the Lord, for he would follow hard after the plan of God. He would fulfill what God had sent him to do. He will drink no wine nor liquor, the things of this world had no tug upon him. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. The Spirit of God would be so stirring within him, right from the point of being a fetus within his mother's womb, he would be one who would be filled with the Spirit of God and would have that yearning, that desire, that ambition to be pleasing to be walking by faith, trusting in the Lord's plans. He will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. We're talking about how the, the character of God's plan is revealed. Here we have this simple word turn, and in that we have the essence of the word repent. John would be the one who would cry out in the wilderness and he would beckon to the people. He would speak to soldiers, he would speak to the powerful, he would speak to the weak. He would tell them, you need to turn from your wicked ways. You need to look to the Lord. You need to set aside those grasping motives. You need to set aside those means by which you get ahead in this world that you might set your affection upon the Lord. He will turn many, he will cause many to repent and to turn back to the Lord. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him. Who is this him? Of course the Messiah. It is the Jews great delight. It is he, this little child who I promise to you. He who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah, the prophet of fire, the man who shook heaven with his prayers, to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, to change and to mold and to fashion anew something that had become hard and to melt, melt it and to mold it into something which was pleasing in the sight of the Lord and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous, so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. At this time of year, there are so many preparations. The stores for weeks and weeks have been making their preparations, hoping to take out of us as much money as they possibly can. They play the Christmas songs and they set out the decorations, but more importantly, than the store's preparations and the preparations of your home for food or for gifts or for whatever is the preparation of your heart that you might welcome the Lord, the King of all, the Lord of Lords, the Master of Masters, that you might welcome Him into your heart, not just for a day, but for all of your life. Have you welcomed Him? The one who comes, the one who comes according to God's plan to be the redeemer of your soul, to turn that your heart might be turned. Has your heart been turned? Oh, would you this Christmas season look to the Lamb of God? Would you look to the great plan of God that you might really live and that you might know true joy and true gladness?